through the lot because there's no buttons blooped over there. Oh, and I didn't get Facebook up. I got distracted. Chelsea. Do you need me to button? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. angry. We're live in one place. Dun, 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 dun. Live in one place, not in the other. Dun, 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 we got dun. this. Dun, 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 dun. Who let me touch the buttons? I don't know. I thought you were all done. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll just update this thing later. Okay. Don't let me forget. So. We got it. We're under control. Boop, boop, boop. Where is the button? We're live on one place. We're live on YouTube? <laughs> Someone distracted me? <laughs> me? <laughs> fully, fully take responsibility. Okay, where's the go live right up there. button, Leah? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't know where the go live button is. That'll be very loud if someone's wearing earbuds. Yeah. Your mark is set. Go! It's not a race today. It doesn't have to be a race. It can be a no. smooth, steady sew today. Oh, started that in the wrong order. It's okay. That's okay, as you probably should. He'll know. <laughs> He's all knowing. Uh, what are we calling this today? Foundation piecing. On paper. That is what we're doing today. Foundation piecing on paper. It is fabulous. We were getting set up and I was distracting Chelsea. <laughs> My go live button isn't here. Uh, post oh. details? Fine. Oh, it needs even just that. Okay. It needs more, apparently. Let's do that. We'll fix it after. <laughs> Needs more description. <laughs> please, please tell more. <laughs> yes, it wants all the info. Uh, welcome to Thursday on Facebook and YouTube. Sorry for our YouTube audience. You guys got a little bit longer show while we set up Facebook the rest of the way. If you want the shorter version of today's video, watch on Facebook. <laughs> Only like... <laughs> A minute. Yeah, it's just a minute. It's all good. Um, we were chatting on Tuesday about glue. So I'm Leah. This is Chelsea. We're at my sewing room. The usual intros that need to happen. Um, we're chatting on Tuesday about glue and some of the places we use glue. And in that, we showed very roughly that you might want glue for something like foundation piecing. And then very promptly decided that you guys needed a proper paste foundation piecing demo. So we have a little block today that we're stitching and assembling. Um, we designed this today. Barb and Chelsea designed this today. Barb did it. Oh, Barb did it. I, I tried designing something else and it failed miserably. Okay. So we went with Barb's really good one. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so we've got a little block for you guys today that... Um, you can get this block for free. What is the magic trick to getting their block for free today? Was it an online code? Yeah. I'll show that at the end of the video. We will. So you'll be able to also make this block and you'll be able to make it in whatever colors you want. Or make it the same colors we're making it. I picked scraps that were cute. It's good to practice this with scraps and not your like good fabric when you're foundation piecing for the first time. And so you can get the hang of it. I haven't practiced uh, this design yet. That's okay. So this could be fun. Yeah. I may have also cut this piece wrong. So that's a... I didn't realize that till now. I think it's going to work just fine. Um, so with foundation piecing, I'm just going to pop over to our close-up cam. Oops, I'm going to pop over to this camera. With foundation piecing... I don't know where that camera needs to be. Nope, right there. Um, what we're getting out of here is a template with numbered sections, one, two, three, and there's a unit A and a unit B on this that we'll connect together later on. Um, one of the fabulous things about foundation piecing is you can get really sharp, really accurate points, even when there's weird angles involved. So 
it's it's fabulous you'll see in a moment um there is a little bit of figuring out your fronts and your backs as you go um, but chelsea's got a really great system um with how she manages this um, i don't do it quite the same way i like origami so <laughs> when chelsea's starting foundation piecing she pre-folds all the lines on her paper so that she knows where fabrics need to line up later on what do you do leah i fold later on oh that's interesting so i fold after i stitch interesting when i need to trim but i'll admit sometimes things don't line up because they move <laughs> i trim in a really weird order there's more than one way to do this there is more than one for sure do we have a problem hey tyler maybe what kind of problem just move early because you're filming in vertical are we when you're looking for your phone i'm gonna guess yeah just i just wanted the screen and not to move this camera okay i know it looks a little bit weird it'll be okay it's fine it's fine <laughs> that was on purpose it worked better with the brother screen because it's tall and vertical when we were doing that the other day so um chelsea's just folding along those lines and the first line you stitch it will be the line between piece like area one and area two so let's get some fabric on there and we'll do some stitching okay so i do this in a weird order so because i know this is piece one yep and i want to make sure i line piece two up right yep i'm gonna glue piece one on yep fold back my paper and trim it oh okay and then i line my other piece up and then i have one side trimmed okay sure so this is piece one. I'm going to take a piece of fabric that will fully cover that piece. I'm going to glue it down. With your sew line glue pen. I love this glue pen. Great. And with this, you're going to be stitching from the paper side with fabric on the back side. But the fabric need your first fabric needs to be right side facing away from your paper because it's going to be the right side of this. So all of these blocks are mirrored um, when you're stitching them. So what I do is I fold back on the line between one and two. Yep. And I take an add a quarter ruler. So you still get a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I just trim this off. And now I know pretty much exactly where I need to place piece two from this side. Nice. And then I don't have a gap. Perfect. So I'll take piece two, and I'm just going to put it face down, and then I'm going to give this over to my friend Leah. Awesome. So before I get actually stitching this, um, if you've got a Bernina, there's a really fabulous stitch on board your machine for foundation piecing. Lots of times you need to start and stop partway inside the block. This already this first line starts on the edge of the block and comes in. Mm -hmm. and stops in the middle but you don't want to stop right at the end of where you need your fabric you need a bit of a seam allowance um so on bernina's in the quilting stitch folder there is a stitch that is a straight stitch um on this machine it's stitch 1324 the number varies a little bit between the different models um but what it's got at the beginning is four tiny 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 little stitches which will act as a securing stitch that's about a quarter inch long and it will end when you tap the reverse button with four tiny little stitches and if my that might be programmed to trim right then or it might not be but we'll we'll check that in a moment so we are going to start this this way and those fabrics are lined up and the other thing i would do with foundation piecing is lower my stitch length um, I usually go to about 1.75, 1.5, so a little shorter, especially if the pieces are little. And then we're just going to aim to have our needle land right in that, right in that printed line on the paper. The tiny little stitches, which will lead into... Bless you! Sorry. Excuse me. Let's 
stitching right through that line. And when I get to the end of the line that I need to stitch, I'm going to tap my reverse button. And it's going to do a couple more tiny little stitches to secure it. Four, actually. It's not quite as many as I want because I shortened um, the stitch length. And then I can use my trimmer on board the machine, which depending on how the machine is set up, may or may not have a knot attached to it. I would not have another knot at this point. So I've already just made a little knot. And there's that steam line sewn. And our fabrics were right sides together on the wrong side of the paper. He made you another. You made me another. Because this design is two pieces. It is. So same thing. We're going to make the quarter inch seam allowances with our trimmer and just make sure we have enough fabric overhanging rather than using the quarter inch uh, foot. Um, the foot I'm using is a quarter inch piecing foot for the Bernina, which is the 97D, so it has the dual feed. Um, but I can see right to the needle, which I really like. <laughs> That That's makes me happy when I'm foundation piecing. Um, the other thing I would suggest uh, when doing foundation piecing is using a sharp needle. So something like a Microtex would be a happier needle to help you get through that paper. And the smaller the pieces you're working with, the finer the thread you should be using so that your thread takes up less space in the seam allowance. Right now this is a 60 weight quilting cotton, but these are fairly sizable pieces. If you're getting down into really itsy bitsy foundation piecing, um, like wee little foundation piecing, um, you might want to go to a way thinner thread, like an 80 weight, something like Deco Bob, and then also a smaller needle. So two of those made for Chels. Yay! And now we're just going to finger press them open. And then we're going to do a crazy thing. Are you ready for the crazy thing? We're going to chop it. And then we'll know to line up our new piece. Perfect. And if this was a big floppy piece, you could also glue down. Totally. We could do that now. And if, if before you finger press this, the seam allowance was way too wide, um, this is when I trim these out. Oh, yes. We could trim it now. That's when I trim those. I, I like uh, skipping the extra trim. Because you line it up ahead of time. Totally. This is where there's more than one way to do this and find whichever way works for you. I like doing that because I feel like I lose less fabric. That's fair. Then I can use smaller pieces of fabric, which is nice. So then I know my next piece has to line up right on this edge. I'm going to take my lovely purple. Put it on my edge. And here I kind of just give it a little test flip because it's in a weird angle. Just to make sure it's going to cover that whole piece of paper. Yes. Because I could always shimmy were, it down. Or if you shimmy the wrong way, you'd miss a corner somewhere. Yeah, so we'll just put it there. And I cut pretty generous sized pieces, so I'm not too concerned on this one. But if, say, you're using scraps. I like to live on the edge, and sometimes it's not my friend. I'm <laughs> glue my piece down. It's not super flat today. And with this, I, I would finger press between these steps, but I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't take this to an iron no. because you might distort your paper because it is paper. All right. Now that and we're using uh, Carol Doak's foundation paper, it is excellent which design. will run through your printer at home. So if you wanted to make hundreds of this block after you get it from us, um, you could. And on these, it probably won't... Nope, not phone. Sorry. Close up. That's the camera I want. Um, on these, it probably won't matter um, kind of which direction you pick to sew these ones. Sometimes sometimes it won't really matter. Because you need to sew the whole seam line anyway.
Have you ever been foundation piecing and forget to open your fabrics before cutting them? Because that's happened to me before. Not right now, but it's happened. Um, yes. It makes me so sad when that happens. So, I'll hand that one back to you. Alrighty, I can trim it up. Oh, I like this team foundation piecing business. Isn't it excellent? <laughs> I can just sit in so and you can do all the flip and trims for me. I actually quite like the flip and trim part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The seam allowance is perfect, so I'm not going to mess with perfection here. And if you miss using the tack down, it's not the end of the world, the tighter stitch. Okay, we're back to your camera. So what happens after... All right. So I just glued this piece down because I have all my pieces done now. We're going to flip it over and we will just use a ruler. We could use our out of quarter because it's here or you could use your regular quilting ruler and we're just going to trim around our block and we can save all our scraps for all our small foundation piecing we like to do. So there is other ways to encourage your fabric to fold if it's if it's giving you trouble. Um, yeah. Carol on YouTube has suggested uh, Clover's fabric folding pens. Oh, it's excellent. Uh, that would do a great job. Um, there's seam rollers that will help get those flat. Um, if you're doing a whole lot of this, you might find you don't want to use your fingernail for everything. Yes. Or maybe you don't have long fingernails. Or maybe they're super pretty and you don't want to wreck them. <laughs> <laughs> <Bah>. <laughs> All right, I almost have this one done for you. So it's stitch and flip, stitch and flip, stitch and flip to build out however many layers in each little block you have. And then once you have your individual block units made, then they'll get stitched together. Oh, it's... And I'll show you my trick for attaching your blocks so they line up. Oh, please. I'd love that because I always have trouble getting my blocks to line up perfectly. Oh, I have another spot for glue. Oh, glue. Okay, great. <laughs> glue is my friend. I need a couple pins, though. So, what is your favorite thing to foundation piece on paper? So, I actually, a few years ago, I did wedding gifts. I'm thinking one of them I probably did eight years ago. Um, found a pattern for a skier and made pillows for a cousin who's getting married who skis all the time. Like, when they announced that they were having a baby, there was a picture of itsy-bitsy little ski boots on the side of the mountain. <laughs> it was adorable. Um... I did a guitar and a, and a piano for another cousin that got married. And then I stopped making gifts for my cousins as they got married because I got too busy. And I stopped going to weddings because they were too far away. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but things like flying geese. Like mm -hmm. if you want rows of flying geese, this is my favorite way to make flying geese because they're super bang on accurate. Um, and you don't have to have flying geese in rows there's you could do you can do so much cool stuff um when i was first learning to quilt and foundation piece i drafted some on my own and i did graphs that's excellent yeah. that sounds so fun <laughs> it was great have, they're just blocks in my like orphan block drawer Don't i should resurrect that? that i should resurrect that you should make a whole scrap quilt with your orphan block drawer it would be a very weird quilt but I bet it'd be cool and one of a kind. It's true. Um, so my trick for getting these things to line up, especially when you've got some weirder angles. Like these. Like these. <laughs> They're very crazy. Um, I like to pin through my corners. And these pins are a little chunkier than I'd like to actually use, but they'll be better visually. Oh, I'll use yellow ones. Are there better pins here that you'd like to use? 
No, this will work. Okay. I'll be fine. So, pin through both of those, get that laid out into our funky little mountain shape, and then aim back through the corner there. And the corner there. So, pins right through those corners. And, like, this end is quite bulky because there's a seam running through there. But I can... I unscrewed it on you. Why? Because I don't know. I just like to put the glue down because it has the twist. <laughs> so in there, I tuck the glue right in there to hold those corners together where they need to be at both ends. And if there's, like, if there's other points along the seam that need to line up, I would glue there as well. Because then the fabric, if it shifts at all in reference to the paper, because you don't have the same, like, feeding action with your feed dogs yeah. because there's paper in the way, um, it'll help hold those things. And then if I was really worried about this, I could uh, pin a couple more places. And usually I would sew this one from the end that I'm more concerned about. And away. That so, makes sense. So that it, it all stays together. Might need a, do you have a stiletto over there? I you, should. The answer is yes. Because we put everything in a drawer right next to you. I mean, you put everything in I a drawer I got my right finger next. stuck in a bucket for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> um, normally, we, when I get to this kind of level, I would probably have a leader and an end, like a leader piece. So would you like one? No, I'm, I'm through. I'm in. I have fabric confetti over here. Reverse to lock the stitch. And may or may not use my thread cutter. <laughs> Random. <laughs> Is it perfect? Oh, Leah! Look at how cute it looks! And it has nice texture from the lines on the fabric, actually. <laughs> that turned out really cool. Yeah. We can open these up, too. And, yeah, usually with foundation piecing, I would press these seams open because they there tends to be a lot of bulk um, but because we use the shorter stitch length um, these papers are going to perforate out really really nicely later yeah. on um, if this was just ready to be sewn into like another square block or another foundation piece unit um, you could take the papers out now or wait till the quilt's done totally there's, let's take the papers. Let's take the papers out now. <laughs> it sounds fun. <laughs> do you want to do one side and I'll do the other? You can just do it. Okay. <laughs> oh, that that came out great. What size did you use again for your stitch length? I used one point seven five for my stitch length. Hmm. Because this is excellent. Yeah. The shorter the stitch length, the easier those papers will come out. Because then they're like thoroughly perforated. <laughs> Every once in a while I get a little worried when I'm pulling my papers out on some delicate ones. And then I just missed a tiny bit of water on them. And it just... Yeah, this paper will will break down. Mm -hmm. um, sweet. <laughs> oh, what's there? And at this point, when the block is assembled, then you could take an iron to it. Can get into this. There we go. Beautiful. It needs a little bit of a little bit of heat. A little bit of heat. A little bit of heat. But that's so cute. But yeah, I it's, like, it's fun. I like it. And it's really fun to see how these can play in mirror. And there's all sorts of shapes you can make this way that are really really hard to piece um, in a traditional manner. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how I would piece this traditionally. Uh, with templates, probably. Oof. 
But then you have to get the angles right when you attach them and make sure the dog ears are the right distance away. Yeah, and, and you don't make them boop the. Yeah. So <laughs> this, I really like foundation piecing. It is, it does have some mess to it. Yes. But the perfection is fabulous. But now you have confetti for your next party. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, now we even have fabric confetti. And this is something, um, <laughs> like, you don't need a ton of space. So if you're, like, working in a smaller space or this, this you could take on holidays. Totally. Because you don't need a big ironing board. You don't need a big layout board. You can just take, like, a travel size cutting mat. Yeah, just a little bitsy thing. Yeah. Your little rotary cutter. Your add a quarter. You can get a smaller add a quarter. It's true. I'd just go with the long one. Or if you have a hard time, like you have the add a quarter plus and the regular. So the plus is wider. Plus is wider. Dumping. And the add a quarter is little. Yeah. They're great. But they easily fit in a pencil case with your small rotary cutter ready to go for sale. And your glue. Yes, all of this would fit in a pencil case. <laughs> This would right. be great. Yeah, it's lovely. It's lots of fun. Oh, so fun. Yeah, we have one book. In oh, we do. We have one book. I think there was another one in store the other day, but I don't know if it's still here. Um, Adventures in Paper Piecing and Design. It's got some funky things like plants, plant pots. I think that's a bug. Might be. Fireflies. Fireflies, nice. Good guess. This is her jungle view. This one just looks like a little chaotic, but there's sections. Oh, they're flat. They're uh, leaves. Nice. I can see it in the camera <laughs> over there. That's how I'm seeing what they are. <laughs> <laughs> and usually, if I'm getting into something more complicated and colorful, I use pencil crayon to color in my spots. Oh, totally. So I put the right fabric over the right areas. I've it's been not there. super fun to pick this stuff out. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, not at all. Um, yeah, that's foundation piecing in a nutshell. The short version. There's always more to add to it and lots more detailed blocks to start working through. Um, but yeah, lots of fun. So much fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, other things you might want to know about this week. If you have not yet uh, found it, uh, we have a virtual Facebook party happening with hoop sisters which is an embroidery company mm -hmm. um they're showing all sorts of fabulous things in there it started yesterday and um if you want to see what they're up to they're doing a live tomorrow afternoon the actual real humans from hoop sisters they're doing a live presentation tomorrow sure. to alberta time and you can pop in there even if you don't currently machine embroider but you want to see what it's about um it's free to join there's a link um on our facebook there's a link in an e-news that went out yesterday instagram has links the link is in last friday's e-news and we could probably get it in the comments on today's video i'm sure we could we, we definitely could um so yeah free to join have a look see and see what it's all about um yeah. it's cool there's some very neat projects um that they have available and it's just a really interesting technique so pop in there see what that's all about um other upcoming things oh fat flannels on sale this week sure is 25 percent off i heard yes i would not foundation piece with flannel i don't think that would crack me up it's a little bit stretchy i feel like soft. it'd be a little frustrating it'll be a little frustrating probably not the right combo <laughs> but you could do all this fabulous work on the front of your quilt and put flannel on the back you sure could or make flannel pjs mm-hmm to go with your paper pieced quilt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a couple fabric lines in flannel and in cotton. Oh, so you could oh Nice Ice Baby yeah. is in cotton. And it's in flannel. Nice. And then I think Pixie Noel we have that too. There was a couple others along the way as well. Yeah. Not ringing a bell at the moment what they are. There's a lot of fabric in the store. They're pretty cute. Yeah. Um, so that's happening this week. Um we have uh, today's the 26th. We have five days left in our Big Bernina sale. Eee. So there's a whole swath of machines that are on sale with wicked bundles, lots of them, and lots of really cool add ons. So if you've been kind of thinking that might be your thing, come see us before January 31st. We're on January 31st. 
on or before, yes. On or before. <laughs> we're not open Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so we are open on Tuesday. So you could come then. <laughs> yes, you could. Um, <laughs> and we've got floor models on sale as well. We sure do. And some trade -ins. So lots of cool things there. And uh, coming up in February, we still have a couple spots left in our One Sweet Spring event, mm -hmm. which is an embroidery class. If you wanted to join us in store and give embroidery a try, you could. Yep. And there's still space in our Calla Lily class, which is an embroidered wall hanging. It's cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. And it has a lot of techniques in it. Totally. And it's a chance to try hoop sisters in a small scale. Totally. Um, the other thing we've got happening beginning of March. Yeah, we have our So Happy Embroidery event. Um, if you're looking to give embroidery a try, it's two days of fantastic fun. The projects are cute. And... Um, they're really, not inside me right now. No, really, there's a big array of projects in there, so it would be a nice one to have you join us for. And if you don't own a machine yet, not a problem. I have floor models. Yeah, we can get you on one. We can get you on a machine and let you give it a try before you jump and get an embroidered machine for the first time. Get your toes wet first. Yeah, give it a shot. See if you like it before you invest. Totally. Um, so that's some of the stuff we've got going on. Fabric behind us is... Gotta read it again. Uh... Gnome grown. Gnome grown. There's gardening gnomes. They're cute. <laughs> They're so cute. The gingham. I really like the gingham on their I hats. I like the gingham too. And the little birdhouses and, and the, bunnies. The green gingham up there. Yeah. It's cute. So, thank you for joining us today. Um, if you would. Oh, we have a free thing for you. We have a free thing? We have a free thing. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> Remember? I forgot about that. <laughs> Thing. We have a free thing. If you, thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, because this is a block we designed, we're allowed to do whatever we want with it. Um, if you would like to own this block and give Foundation Piecing a, a whirl, um, you can get it from us. There's a coupon code. It's Facebook Paper. Facebook Paper is the coupon code. All one word, no caps. So, log in, make an order. Facebook paper is your fancy coupon code on the website, mysewingroom.ca. Tyler made it up. That it works. was a great one. I liked it. Facebook paper. <laughs> Facebook paper. And then you you too can make one little mountain or many mountains. Yeah, you can print as many as you want. Yeah. I'm... Do you want to make more so we can see what they look like tiled out? And play with arrangements on them? We could. We could. We definitely could. <laughs> Because I'm intrigued now. I feel like they could be... Here you go. <laughs> I don't have time. I have to work for my class tomorrow. <laughs> You're not done your homework? Well, I'm done half my homework. Leah, you, you worked ahead last week. You're not done this week. I'm where I need to be for class tomorrow. Oh, good. Can On one have... quilt, but I'm making two. <laughs> and the other one's not quite where it needs to be. Not very so good. So we could, we could label them end to end and make diamonds. We could. And then we could offset those diamonds. This block would actually play out really interestingly. I'm, I'm, I don't have time. <laughs> Another <laughs> projects <laughs> with deadlines. <laughs> so my challenge to all of you, get our free block. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Send us pictures if you try it because Barb designed this little block. Yeah. I think it's so cute. Perfect. Um, if you liked today's video and you know somebody else who might need to know about foundation paper piecing, um, share this video. Like this video. We'd love to see your comments. And hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. That's the magic to knowing when we subscribe and notifications. It's the magic to knowing when we go live again. All the magic. <laughs>